G'day, Steve's my name. Just want to give you a short video on my experience of purchasing the Engine Guard EG01-3. I purchased this product as a, my first 200 series that I own had an oil issue and the motor seized. So it is a real issue and uh, I didn't want the same thing to happen to this one. I've done a bit of work to this one and I want to make sure the engine runs as long as it can, um, considering. so. Early warning is uh, the thinking behind purchasing this particular product. Just from the start, I'd like to say that I don't know anyone at Engine Guard. Uh, I was searching online for a product and found this one. I paid full retail price for it. And the reason I'm doing this video is I was so suitably impressed with the product and the after sales support that I offered to do a video for them. So this isn't a review video, it isn't an installation video. This is purely just a video to, to give perhaps 200 series series owners a bit of a helping hand in installing uh, the same product. So I'll grab my phone and, and give you a bit of a bit of a walk around, hopefully get a few tips. So I might start with the temperature sensor as that was the perhaps easier part of the installation. So straight away you'll notice that I've got a few aftermarket mods going on. Uh, without the top mount intercooler I was able to get to that bolt there um, as the bolt I chose for the temperature sensor. Now, I haven't even driven the car um, and compared how that relates to water temperature, so I might be moving that later on. I've le left enough cable to, to go and do that if I need to. Um, next is the oil pressure. Uh, switch and also where that goes. Now I'm just going to cut to a, a scene that was under the vehicle so you can see that underneath the vehicle now I have the passenger side bash plate removed and if we go right underneath you can see that I've got the adapter the switch all in there so that's where it's located wiring goes back up the main lean there. Okay, coming back up, if we take this, this out, and um, I don't bother putting clips in here anymore because it is out so often. What I've done with the, the cable for that sensor is I've run it underneath um, this uh, radiator support mount here, down the side, past the air box and into the firewall there um, as well as a number of other cables just a, a tip this is how I go about getting it through the firewall so I've got a stiff bit of fencing wire uh, and then this is just um, soapy water and I um, tape the wire to the uh, fencing wire as an electrical wire to the fencing wire Spray, spray where it needs to go through and then pull it through. Uh, the soapy water helps lubricate it and then dries off afterwards. So here's, let me turn that off. here's the uh, finished product. That's where I chose to mount it, so underneath the steering wheel. I didn't want gauges and clutter on top of the dash. I just want it to be nice and neat. I can see it if I sort of twist around, but the main reason for this product was an alarm. Um, that's what I wanted, so... Uh, I can press all the buttons easily enough from there and, and that's the, the place I chose. Uh, I'll show you a diagram of, of the wiring because it's, it's a little bit hard to explain what's going on there. But just, just to say, uh, the wire that I chose was an ignition wire, so not accessories. I didn't want to be able to you know, sit there with the radio on um, and then have this thing beeping away at me because it had no oil pressure. So... Yeah, the wire was from the brake pedal area. Let me know if that's a good idea or not. I was a little bit reluctant on that. All right, this is how the oil pressure switch works. Uh, the switch itself is an earth switch. So when there is no oil pressure, the switch is closed and earths it out. So what you wanna do is um, from the terminal of your, your switch, and I got the style that was a blade um, terminal to make it a bit easier for installation. That goes to a load, uh, and I've chosen a light bulb 
for that. So it goes to the negative side of the light bulb. The positive side of the light bulb goes to uh, either ignition or um, something something to, to, to get the light bulb happening when the switch is closed. Your engine guard product via the, I think it's the single yellow cable um, that comes out of the corrugated um, tube uh, taps into the to that side of it and that detects line voltage change when when the switch is closed um, this side goes to the display unit and um, making sure that those cables are connected to the same colors so just to recap when that closes the light comes on and the engine guard unit senses the voltage change and your alarm goes off as well as the light going on as well that is where I chose to install the display unit these ones either side are exhaust temperature sensors just to ignore that the left one's actually faulty but that's nothing to do with engine guard at all uh, all right so the warning light is just currently dangling down there I haven't sort of fully put all this back together I don't even think I'll be putting an in, a warning light up the top. I, I chose the engine guard product because of its alarm capabilities. So, give you a bit of a demonstration. If I start it up. All right, so the engine guard unit is booting up. You can see it's in oil mode. You have to set that once you've done all the wiring. And we're running on uh, engine temperature 35. That alarm going off is that, ignore that. So there we go, no, no light. If I turn it off, turn the accessories on so the unit fires up, no oil pressure because the engine's not running. Exactly what we want. And bingo, alarm's going off because no oil pressure. So if I'm humming along on the highway and uh, that alarm comes on, I'll know about it, and uh, I'll be able to pull up before my engine seizes. That's the whole idea. Same with the temperature, apart from uh, you know the fact that there's no oil, it'll be a different issue perhaps. But anyway, you get the idea. So thanks to everyone at Engine Guard for your help. I've really appreciated your um, tips on uh, just getting this final stage done. And uh, yeah, hopefully you 200 series owners have got a few tips for installations as well. Thanks, bye.